your business becomes like your fourth it's child. It's your next child, yeah. It really is. I mean, every day it's what's happening with work, what are the numbers, how is so-and-so doing, yeah. All right, so today you're going to love our episode with Charles and Daryl Catherine. They own a business in the Panhandle of Alabama, not the Panhandle of Florida, where they do all the linens and different things for all these different short-term rental companies and hotels and places like that. It's called Liberty Linens. They also have helped operate a uniform store. So what we do is we go through their story of how they grew up. Both of them grew up in business owner homes. One mom owned a stationary company and then one dad owned a construction company. And then one dad, it sounds like, who I can't wait to have on the episode, is salesman number one. And they've started out selling uniforms all over the country. You are gonna love this episode with Charles and Daryl Catherine. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Today, I have Charles and Daryl Catherine Campbell, mm -hmm. and they are from South Alabama Orange Beach area, and they've got a wonderful story. So the first question I always ask is, who are you, what do you do, and why does it matter? So I don't care who answers. Okay. So one of you two, just go ahead. Tell me who you guys oh, are. You can go first. <clears throat> uh, well, I'm Charles Campbell, yep. uh, originally born in Birmingham. Lived there most of my life uh, and then moved around a bit, mainly for dad's work. Mm -hmm. He sold his father. It was a uniform rental service company, okay. sold it. We uh, moved to Orange Beach, Alabama, where they had always had a vacation home. Uh, lived there full time. Dad started a new business, which has kind of developed over the years. And uh, early 90s, we had like three hurricanes in three years. So my mom was like, I'm out. No, we can I'm leave the business <laughs> here, but we're, we're going. So we went to Chattanooga and then back to Birmingham. And that's where I lived the most of my life, met her. And then we've moved down to Orange Beach twice now. Twice, so. yeah. Perfect. What about you? I am from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, went to Briarwood, graduated from Briarwood. Um, my parents both had businesses growing up. My mom had a stationary company. and Did not know that. Yes. So she, um, she was new to Birmingham when my parents moved here uh, after college. And she and a friend decided to start a stationary business. Mm. They grew it to a huge... I mean, you couldn't walk into a stationery shop and it not be sold there. Wow. Sweet Pea Designs. And, I've um, heard of them. Oh, yeah. So she did that for like 30 years. No way. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yep. Got to go to, um, so all growing up, she would go to New York for market. We'd yeah. hear these fabulous stories. And then I guess in my 20s, I got to go do that with her. And it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of fun. So, um, and then my dad has a construction company. Um, who, commercial construction. Who, <laughs> yeah. by the way, has built, rebuilt, renovated this whole building that we're sitting in. Mm -hmm. So we are shooting this on the campus of Highlands College here in Birmingham. And Johnson Creek Construction uh -huh. is who was contracted to do all the construction. And the guys at Johnson Creek, I've met your dad before just in passing. Um, check his hand. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. But then Wes, who yes. is one of the, the head Wes guys. Wes is awesome. He's incredible. Yeah. And then uh, Lanny. I don't know if you know Lanny. I don't know Lanny. He's incredible. Okay. Him and Wes. That's good to like, hear. Yeah. Uh, and then Lanny's son. So they, the, the crew at Johnson Creek has done a wonderful job. They, they are, are awesome. so wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and so then that's the company that her dad yeah. owns here, here in Birmingham. They so have a good culture over they there. They do. They do. Yeah. So, okay. So Birmingham people. Yep. Tell me about, let's go back to the business part of it. So you had a really okay. interesting story about college uh, that I want to make sure <laughs> okay. that we get to here in a second. Uh, as we're, uh, but the, the thing is, I know these guys a, a pretty decent amount, a little bit, know about their business. So I'm going to ask these questions. Some, some of the answers I know, some of these I don't know. So let's go back to, you said uniform rental business. That's the original business that your granddad owned. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. It's kind of like Centos, Aramark, Unifirst. They'd sell, or they would rent the uniforms to Express Oil Change or mm -hmm. a car manufacturer and eat weekly pick up, wash, bring back. And they, they sold that. They did. Okay. Now, what is the business that your dad owns now? So it is one corporation called okay. At Work Sales Corporation. Okay. And we kind of do business as two different names. Uh, one is At Work Uniforms, uniform sales nationwide to casinos, hotels, resorts, uh, restaurants, trucking companies. Screen if you can put a yeah, if you can put a logo on it, we can get it. So it's not rental. Mm -hmm. No, just hotel. Buy. 
he, okay. the company he sold to was a huge national company, fired both he and, and his brother on his birthday and then ran the company into the ground. So he's like, I'll never rent anything again. I'm gonna just sell stuff. Perfect. So he did that. Um, and actually he started with exporting USA made textiles to Europe. Um, huh. he, you don't hear that. Yeah. He, well, well he's not done now. a what, study, study abroad. abroad. In Holland. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what were they? What were they exporting? Uh, just flat uh, rolls of fabric. Oh, so we were. They were making it here, made in the USA, just regular fabric, and they were shipping it to Holland, Europe, Europe Germany, wherever over there. He's got a bunch of buddies that he's still friends with over there. So he started that way, and then moved to Orange Beach, and of course, vacation town yeah. down there was really, really minimal. Yeah. As he said, you know, there used to just be sand over here. <laughs> um, Not anymore. Yeah. Now and the Phoenix is on everything. Uh, everything. That's true. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so backstory, if nobody yeah. knows, Orange Beach is a absolutely beautiful beach town in Alabama. Yes. In Alabama. It's amazing how many people will say, Ooh. how are y'all enjoying Florida? And I'm like, you live in Alabama. We live in Alabama. Orange Beach is part of us. Orange Beach. Let me say this, okay? Branding. Orange Beach <laughs> has the best logo they do ever. have a good logo. And it's like new. It's like the last five or ten years old. Yeah. It's the best logo ever. Orange Beach in Alabama, Orange Beach Gulf Shores are the two main beaches. Mm -hmm. And they butt right up next to each other. And it's a wonderful place to go. But the Phoenixes on how are these high rises that they I swear there's a hundred of them. I mean the Roman numerals yes. are never ending. They the never end. <laughs> but they're great places. Yeah. And they range from super old to really, yeah. really new, but they're incredible places. So I'm sorry we got sidetracked. <laughs> no. So you guys living in a beach town. Yeah. Your, your dad owns the uniform sales portion. So, well, it started as the exporting textiles. Yeah. And then we started selling flat goods, so sheets and towels, table napery, to the vacation area kind of along the coast. It was – the season was very short back then. Now it's like – it seems like the summer season, vacation season spans almost the whole year. But it was like, you know, June to August, and then it just stopped. So really? they were selling sheets and towels – to all the vacation companies, okay. housekeeping companies down there. And then the phone stopped ringing. It's like, you know, dang, we got to figure out something else to sell. And so I think all the Mississippi casino boats had started opening at that time. He goes over there, hey, we want to sell these sheets and towels to you. They say, yeah, that's fine, but we need like 500 polos. And dad was like, oh, yeah, I just forgot we that catalog. Those. We got those. We can yeah. do that. So yeah. he figured out polos t-shirts you do this That's, absolutely it is very yeah. much a campbell motto like yeah we can we figure can that, that out we got that yeah okay so how old are you at the time when this is going on so i was born in 87 okay we moved down there and he really started the company in 92 oh wow so you're so, young yeah yeah okay um, live in that beach line that's right <laughs> yes in a way Riding jet okay. skis at like seven or whatever. So they're selling textiles, and then Mississippi Mississippi gamblers call and say, <laughs> yeah. "We need polos." Yeah. And your dad's like, "Absolutely, we kill that." Yeah. And so he starts. That's where the uniform. Business that's started. where, and both businesses kind of grew, but the apparel side grew a lot quicker because people started moving around. We got into hotels. We started doing again. If there's a restaurant, trucking company. If you can put a logo on it, like I said earlier, we we can do it. So that that side's become more nationwide. So I, I, there's a rabbit trail that I really want to go down, and I don't know if we have time to do it. But like, <laughs> talk about the you may not remember this. What was his sales process for doing this with like whether it be Mississippi or like you said restaurants, trucking companies, and I mean anything hotel like yeah, it's unlimited. Yeah. Like, what was this? What was the sales process like? Uh, you know, casinos was probably the biggest draw because okay. of the amount of employees and sure. then employee turnover. If they're churning through employees, you're yeah. churning through uniforms. Yep. So it was kind of, we started to... And it's a niche, niche? Very. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they're, they're custom, and um, so not yeah. everybody's going in there to sell them. Some of them uniforms. are just regular polos, t-shirts, things like this, but then yeah. we do a lot of custom-made apparel as well. Um but, you know, we started, our name started getting around, and we yeah. focused on areas where there's a lot of kind of entertainment, a lot of travel, not necessarily vacation. But okay. so that business kind of started growing throughout the U.S. while Liberty Linen, which is the vacation rental supply, stayed more local in the Gulf Coast and the Panhandle. All right. So you forgive my straightforwardness. You didn't tell me to answer my question. How did he sell? 
How did he sell? Like physically, yeah. how did he sell uniform? So he the one company calls shit. about the call, calls it like calls about the, yeah. the polos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then how did he get to the next casino or the he next hotel? He traveled. I mean, he traveled, traveled Monday through Friday. Yeah. yeah. He was in the car. He was on the road. Hey. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? What's your What's your dad's name? Chuck. Hey. Oh, that's perfect. Uh huh. Hey, I'm Chuck. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. a great. He's a great salesman. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Bob Vino is. No, hold on. That's a great yeah. name. Uh, so Bob Vino is from like the 60s, and it was sales tapes, which uh-huh. we had How to be cassette a tapes until a couple of years ago. I mm-hmm. finally turned them into MP3, but uh, every he would make every salesperson gets hired listen to Bob to Vino. Listen to these. Still. 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 No they, way. There will be a quiz at the end. Are, there will. Are you, do you, have you listened to them? I have. Are they oh, great? Could, There's a lot of good things like... Charles yeah, could teach it. One of the best things... Well, not all of it. One of the best things is, you know, if you're calling a business, you want their business, the first thing to do is say, hey, this Charles won't take a moment to explain why I'm calling. Is it convenient to speak? It kind of, as Dad says, takes the curse off the call, or as Bob Vino said, instead of, hey, let me roll into my sales pitch, you're, hey... Is it convenient? If not, great. Can I call you back tomorrow? Or a That's lot a of times time. that kind of disables the person. They're like, yeah, I got a minute. What, what's up? Yeah. So well, Also, he's the king of the cold call. Oh, there gosh. is not a business Chuck. I mean, because it's the, well, we can do that. He walks in. He kind of looks around. He notices if yeah. they've got floor mats or if they've got uniforms. And it's like, let me talk to you about this and what you could buy from About us. your floor mats. Yeah. Or your uniforms. And he has so many success stories of like, we just made a $250,000 sales on a cold call. So we need to have him on here. Oh, he'd be good. Him and no, my mother. He is an encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> this that <laughs> that might, might be, too be two different podcasts, but uh, yeah. Let's, let's figure out a way to get Chuck on here. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. He'd love it. Okay, yeah. so at work uniforms, your dad's hustling. He's in the car, going mm-hmm. to everywhere, here, there, and yonder, and also word of mouth. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's a... That's a niche community yeah. in itself. Well, and he's got salespeople. Oh, yeah. Started to Regionally. slowly build yeah. the sales team. See, these are like I have a whole yeah. hour of questions about how he did that and like what yeah. his structure yeah. is and like how, what's the commission like. And oh, what yeah. does he pay and we all, still, I mean, like, we all that kind of stuff. That. How many employees does he have right now? Uh, total in the corporation is 51. Holy crap. This is bigger than I thought. <laughs> and, like I knew the I knew the answers to a lot of these, but I didn't know that. 51? How many of those are salespeople? Uh, on the uniform side, 12, so. And they're national? Mm-hmm. From California, Vegas, uh, Oklahoma, Florida. Alabama, a couple in Florida, Indiana. So they're kind of big fish. They're kind of big fish. They're more big fish. They, they go after the big big units. They don't go after the and They're the where area. those big customer bases are so that they can be in person. So That's incredible. Okay, so we've got at work uniforms, and then we've got Liberty Linen. Tell me about Liberty Liberty Linen. Liberty Liberty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell, me about, tell me about Liberty Linen. You can keep that in there. Tell so me about that. It's a uh, vacation rental and housekeeping supply company. So okay. anything that would go into a rental unit or be used to clean it, we sell. So sheets, towels, amenities, all the janitorial products, the chemicals. Small um, appliances. Small appliances. Small appliances. Layers. What do you mean small appliances? Like toasters, microwaves, coffee makers. You got toasters and microwaves in the, in the, in the warehouse? We do, yeah. Vacuum cleaners. Oh. Yep, vacuum cleaners, yep. matting. Uh, so okay so this sounds to me like airbnb like is is airbnb did airbnb catapult your business i know the short-term rental business has been around forever and i hate saying airbnb because it's not airbnb it's short-term rental yeah. it's yeah. kind of like band-aid yeah. yeah it's not a band-aid it's a bandage yes it's not a crock pot it's a slow cooker yeah. but the brand airbnb yeah the brand band-aid the brand crock pot is what you know well you know airbnb how you're gonna airbnb it yeah. No, I'm going to short-term rental. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want people going to Airbnb to get Walcox Point, for example. Yeah. I want them to go to walcoxpoint.com. Walcox okay. Yeah. Ding. That's, uh, that's <laughs> direct I, rental. Yeah, direct rental. So that's what I want. But yeah. like, did Airbnb in the rise of that catapult Liberty Linen? Or was no. Liberty, how no. much was Liberty Linen around a lot longer before, before that? Yeah. Before, but so the Airbnb market is very... I own one property or maybe two or three, you know, some people own a lot, a lot, but we sell in dozens of the sheets and towels or case packs. So it doesn't make sense for them to buy 12 King sheets when they have one King bed or two King beds. So we sell to the management companies or the housekeeping cleaning companies that 
clean for 10, 20, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000 properties. Okay, so we're not selling to Susie that's got an Airbnb at the beach, one, one condo at the beach. We, we considered it like taking and breaking it down, like here's a flat and fitted king sheet, we'll sell you a set, but there's just not enough, we haven't seen enough demand through us um, there are different companies that are kind of like us that will break it down for the Airbnbs. Um, we just bought off Amazon, and we have one yeah. short-term rental. And, and that's we what see a lot of people, people do. like, if I'm at our local Target, I'll see people with tons of white towels mm. and yeah. tons of white sheets, and you know, like, yeah. oh, they're going to stock their unit. You know. Well, we, my, I have one sister-in-law that is a uh, coupon girl. Yeah. Okay. She's she's wonderful, it's, but she loves it. So it's not like it's yeah. a drug. It's drudge for it's her. Fun. She just she, yeah. she enjoys it. She's like, I got this for seventeen cents. <laughs> And like the gift, the gift, my daughter turned eight two days ago and the gift that they gave her, she went downstairs and got it off the shelf in her garage because she's got just stuff that she's bought for 17 cents yeah. and 36 It'll six come cents in handy. and it comes in handy. Yeah. But we went to Kohl's yeah. and we have, y'all, we have like 12 bags of white towels, yeah. white washcloths, white sheets that we got there for half, 30, 70% yeah. off. Yeah. And so things like that. We've got a lot, yeah. there's. It's funny. There's one lady. She's got like 800 properties in Panama How City. Many? 800. One she, lady. She doesn't own them. She manages all the Okay, rentals. yeah. Um, a lot of the management companies, they don't own any of the properties. They're just like, hey, owner, give us your property. We'll take care Put of everything. You just sit back and make mailbox money. Yeah. Um, but she buys all of her towels at Kohl's. It's and Really? It's hilarious. She loves that towel. 800 units, and she buys them all at Kohl's. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well. All right, so tell me about Liberty Linen and what you guys do in the business. So who, now you're who owns Liberty Linen? So we've got At Work Uniform and we got Liberty Linen. They're like, what is it? Tell it's me one corporation. Okay, we're just doing business. DBA. Yeah, DBAs. As of right now, my parents own the corporation. Okay. So, but after, Lord willing, after yep. the first, <laughs> uh, my wife and I will be the owners of Liberty Linen. We're going to break it out break and it put off. it into its own. LLC. Perfect. And that's what the three of us have talked about these things and the yeah. legalities and the logistics we of it. We need to pick it. your brain about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. So what do you do day to day in that? Both of you? What do you, you go first. What do you do day to day? Uh, I am a paper pusher on the uniform <laughs> side of things. Um, since we do business in 38 states um, and we do a lot of work with casinos and uh, tribal entities. There's a lot of paperwork to make sure that we're not laundering money. Tribal. Okay, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Tribal entities. Uh huh. If you've filled out a lot of forms for it, you're, I guess, familiar with the lingo. Yeah. Tribal entities. So uh -huh. you can't say Indians. Oh. No, there's. You can say Indians. You can't. Indian some, it's gaming. on some. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. They it's use, on some paperwork, but yeah. but every tribe is different. So okay. Yeah. Twenty years ago, you would have said Indians. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So but, you fill out. So you do the the uniform side or the Liberty Linen side. I'm on the uniform side now. My. Well, I really took that over from his mom. She's done it a long time, and that was filling out all these forms, and she was kind of. She's ready to hand it. most of that off to somebody else okay so but you're operate I, liberty linen i He's operate both. both right now okay i run all the in inner office yeah hr management uh corporate things legal things that i, I kind of have he wears I'm, a lot of hats i do i kind of hate to keep going over the story but i guess it's yeah. relatively new for them so we had a comptroller that was with us for like 27 years. What is a comptroller? You just dropped that word comptroller. Yeah. What does that mean? So she, I don't know what that means. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably don't have a solid definition, yeah. but she kind of does all those. She's that one person that knows everything in the business. Sure. Everything and flows through And when you ask for something, office. she's able to give it to you. Yeah. She yeah. handled a lot of the payroll, operations, HR, hiring, firing, system changes, yeah. what you're using for order entry, yeah. whatever. Not an owner, but... Kind, kind of like an operator. Was delegated through your, yeah. your folks. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she was there for how long? 27 years? I think so. Wow. Okay. And then it was kind of time for her to go. And so we trained a replacement for about a year. She was with us for about a year. Um, and then COVID hits. And about a month later, we kind of opened back up because Alabama's beaches opened before Florida. So yep. Liberty Linen was able to start selling again. The uniform side took a hit for a long time. But, but that month of April was nuts yeah, it was, for Liberty you know, Linen. It was weird Like for in everybody. a good way. 
Yes. Why, why in a good way? Because our beaches it were went open. On so fire. Like everybody we, that had never been to Orange Beach, but we had a was whole ready to go on new spring slew break. of traffic. Yeah. Uh, everybody who'd normally go to Florida. What well, was that's capacity right? Capacity was at like a hundred percent. That's every, right. Because I remember, crazy. y'all, COVID seems like it was so long ago. Yeah. I remember well, there was something with not being able to rent. And we could we and we had to yeah. go to somewhere in Alabama yeah. that year. KIV uh, opened our beaches yeah. first. That's right. So. Our best friends were supposed to go to 30A. That trip got canceled. Yeah. They ended up going to Dolphin Island yeah. instead. That's where they go back every year. every trip now. They Good love it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're operating in the comptroller's there for a year. You hire somebody. You're 27 years. You hire somebody new. Where did it go from there? COVID hits. We're open for about a month, and then she the replacement just vanishes. So it's kind of like, <laughs> did she die? No, no, no. She just quit and then left. And so it was like, you know, oh crap, what? I don't know what to do. I guess we're going to just start getting letters of, hey, you forgot to do this, pay this. And so over a year and a half, two years, I kind of just, I, I mean, I, there was nobody else to step up and do it. You so I just kind of jumped in. All right, let's take one thing at a time. And what were you doing before that? Mainly sales. Okay. Um, I always kind of did a little something You were else cutting extra. dead weight out of, like he was noticing how much we were paying on credit card processing fees and kind of where waste was going and cutting that back. But You're a you detail really guy, man. had to get your arms around everything. I like everything. the details, yeah. That's and I, I like making something streamlined, working really well, and I'm not having to handhold it or all these exceptions. Oh, remember to do this. Hey, when that happens, you got to do this. Just... No, one way. You're speaking Luke's language over there. <laughs> that is Luke's. That, that's Luke Luke, that's yeah. Luke's loves like love language over there. So, okay, so you start learning the comptroller role or the ins and the outs. Really, this, the operator of yeah. of both businesses. Yeah. So when you said 51 employees, you meant 51 employees with at work uniform and and Liberty Linen. Yes. Okay. How many salespeople do you guys have with Liberty Linen? I think five? it's five. Okay. Five or six. Tell me what they do. I, I'm sorry for the random questions, no, but I love one. this. Like, uh, this is the world I love. <laughs> so the sales role is really different on either side because yeah. on the uniform side, you're the only rep in that area. So that's your customer sure. base. It's yours. You've got an inside support. Oklahoma. I got yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. And all you've the got casinos, a, all the, the so-and-sos. Yeah. That's my yeah. deal. And then nope. you've got a POC in the office who helps you process orders and Okay. Yeah. It, at Orange Beach. So the in-house people work in our office in Orange Beach. Yep. So, but on the Liberty Linen side, and it's mostly been really between Mobile, Alabama and Pensacola, Florida. That, okay. That's been our customer base for, you know, 30 years. Mm -hmm. But now we're, because of the vacation rental industry, people moving around, we've shipped product to Oregon, Maine, Scottsdale, Miami, wherever. Okay. Most of our business, though, is Alabama and, and growing into the Destin, Panama City sure. market. We talked about that last time. Because it's like yeah. Orange Beach on steroids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we all kind of share the accounts. It's not like, hey, you're just that person on that account. Because we'll, it's, it's really still a family community down there. And our customers have been customers for 30 years. When you say accounts, give me an example of an account. So uh, Name one of them if you can. Turquoise place okay. uh the carib the towers yeah, the Carib. i know the carib i've stayed mm -hmm. there yeah okay uh liquid life meyer was a huge company down there they had 1800 rentals but they sold to vacasa um which is big vacasa is eating up kind everything. of the world's largest yeah. online vacation rental management platform okay now because no they offense. bought resort quest how many years ago? Yeah, Wyndham yeah. Resort Quest. That rolled over a couple of times, and they bought Wyndham. So Vacasa is like just gobbling up everybody. Uh -huh. It is. Is it is that good? Is it good though? It's good for us, and it's good okay. for those markets because they'll buy it, and then I hate to say for them, people scatter because they don't like Vacasa. It doesn't seem like they really know how to run vacation rental. They, okay. At least, Ooh, well, well, sorry. No, leave it, uh, leave nice. it in there. I mean, I'm, yeah. you know, ask anybody. Exactly. Um, but people scatter, and then they start their own companies. Um, okay. And so some it's people new. want to be with a smaller rental yeah. company too. They and don't. They don't want to be one of ten thousand. I like talking to a human. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's yeah. a guy in Panama City that we rent from, and I can't remember his name because mm -hmm. uh, Joy deals with him, and he's got a bunch of like big houses. Yeah. Like, 18, 20 people. Yeah. And I can't remember his name, but it's down on the St. Thomas or Thomas Drive side. Okay. If you probably said his name, I would probably recognize it. But we talked to that dude. 
Yeah. He owns like 70 something yeah. houses. And if there's a problem, he's going to We gonna talk to that phone. guy. And yeah. that's cool. Yeah. It's like when someone comes to Walcox Point, yeah. it's Joy or myself yep. answering the message. Yep. And now that's part of the reason why I don't love short term rental, yeah. owning it. But yeah. like it, I do. I like dealing with the, the person. And Luke's got a great story. Luke, more, we've talked about Luke more this episode than we have anything. <laughs> Luke's got a great story about how he stayed at a place in Georgia and the people, it was like these treehouse type things. Yeah. Yeah. He was mesmerized, but he yeah. talked about it for four days. But the owners lived on the property. Yes. And they hung out with them. Yep. And that made his experience. That's pretty and cool. And it's put a passion in him to do, not even, I don't necessarily do something like that, yeah. but like. It's that, hospitality. It though. is. Yeah. And it, he's yeah. got a hospitality heart. Yeah. And uh, I keep pointing to like people <laughs> that can see him. He, he keeps, that way. He's back that there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I do, I, I agree with you. Yeah. When someone big takes over, I them scattering that is good for y'all yeah and they kind of don't get our market like uh, and not to prolong the discussion of them but like that when they they also bought a company down there called kaiser that non-competes run out and Ky the kaiser brothers have already started back up again but they had a big vacation rental hold and um i remember talking to the manager of the operation, the laundry operation, he's like, Vacasa just doesn't get it. We don't have enough employees. And they call him and say, because I think they're based in Oregon, they're like, hey, Mobile looks like a really big city near you. Why don't you just hire a bunch of people from Mobile? Well, at what we're paying, they're probably not going to drive an hour down. Yeah. There's nowhere nearby that they can afford to live. They, they Baldwin just don't County get has it. an infrastructure problem. We're the it's, fastest growing county in the state. Yeah, it's and getting better. It is getting better, but but affordable housing is a big issue so yeah. there are dr horton neighborhoods i feel like they're going up every week really? real yeah. quick yeah. yeah just because those are affordable they're affordable and yeah. apartment complexes yeah yeah but hmm. there's a lot i think in the future for baldwin county baymanette's been one of the northern towns in the county that's yeah. like flat growth for the past 10 years but now there's a new I think it's up to like $3 billion investment by an aluminum recycling producing company. And it's going to bring a lot of jobs and yeah. more people. and A ton all of stuff. economic Novellus development. Novellus? Yeah, yeah. Novellus. So you guys are down there. You've got Liberty Linen. What is, so you're being the comptroller part. You're more pushing paper part. Mm -hmm. As you transition into DK and Charles owning Liberty Linen, what is the transition going to look like with you, mainly you? I'm talking to you. Oh, me. Because you're um, not gonna st you're not gonna own Liberty Linen and still do at work. What, what's it, what's it gonna look like no, to you? I think I will continue to do. I mean, because it truly both sides of the business are family run businesses. Sure. I mean, um, Charles has gotten his arms around so much for his parents that that he could not step back from that now. Um, I'm trying to work myself yeah. out of the job, but it's hard. That's great. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, Liberty Linen is something that I think at home we kind of obsess over and talk about. Yeah. And so I'm not there, but I don't know. It's People will now know that all the commands come from her <laughs> legally. Exactly. No. So. But you talked about it. Uh, your business becomes like your fourth it's child. It's your next child, yeah. It really is. I mean, every day it's what's happening with work, what are the numbers, um, how is so-and-so doing, how do you grow when you guys take over and own Liberty Linen? What's your next, what's your step to grow or to, to progress? What's your thought as being the, not that you're not the boss because you're running the thing, but like you're going to have more freedom. say more freedom. Yeah. What, what, what is, what is the first, what does the first 90 days look like? So we've actually already got something in the works. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was one thing I, I talk to you about the second time was there's a company in Florida that's very similar mm -hmm. they mainly sell sheets and towels and a handful of other things it's a, a much smaller product offering mm -hmm. but it's mostly through their website mostly credit card sales all of it drop ship so it's like mm. a super easy model and it's been run by a lady and her father originally from Boston came down went to St. Augustine and still operate the website and communicate but she's never been able to just let loose and be full sales she's always had to do a lot of the back of house stuff we've already gotten that in place what so, is back of house stuff in that business because that sounds like just e-com so well I mean we still have to process the orders so the website their current website just takes in the orders then she's got to 
put together the purchase order, send it to the vendor, receive the bill, uh, you know, do the accounting side of it. Uh, everything after customer says, hey, I want that, order it. You know, she would still handle all that. So we're gonna take that off her plate mm. and allow her to just run wild on her customer base, which I know the she- The sales part of it. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna take off across, take over the back end of it when Susie orders from Omaha. You're gonna, yeah. when she puts pays, you're gonna take it, Yeah. process the order, make sure it gets sent to Susie in Omaha. Yeah. yeah. But there's no warehouse. Not for her orders, no. It's wow. all drop ship, which is more like the uniform side of the business, which is pretty nice, easy, clean. Well, so. I mean, you can do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and she's got... Their sales are... Uh, one On average, about $1.2 million, And, I mean, she'll double that in a year or two. So Why don't you take that over? Why don't I take that Why over? Why don't you take that over and let him continue to grow Liberty Linen? Well, that, and that will like, be brought into Liberty Linen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Will you will you absorb that part of the business at all? Because I mean, I mean you're doing a lot of the uniform stuff right now. It sounds like. Well, I don't really do anything with uniforms. Okay. I just do stuff with making sure that like, so we'll get a notification that our what's it called? I'm drawing a blank on. Vendor renewal license. Our license uh, is yeah. about to expire. So then I'll have to go through and fill out all this paperwork. Like and sometimes it's a page. Sometimes it's thirty pages. Yeah. Making and, sure that. The owners haven't committed any felonies. Just Making keeping sure all, all of our information up pertinent. to date. Yeah, mm. it's it's a big. That's one reason that's good business for at work is because it's a big barrier to entry. A lot yes. of companies, smaller companies, yeah. see that pack of paperwork, the vendor pack, and they're like, "I'm not filling that out. I'm not doing that." So, um, or divulging that personal information. Mm -hmm. All that information. So, yeah. so you, yep. that's the problem. You need a VA. <laughs> what? Virtual assistant. You need a VA. <laughs> so we just hired a girl from Bosnia. Didn't you hire? We're playing with it right now, yeah. Okay. For okay. cold calling. So the girl that we hired from Bosnia, uh, Tanya, she's wonderful. And by this episode airs, she'll hear this. She's great. English is wonderful. Okay. Like yeah. very, very, I mean, you can slightly hear the accent. Yeah. But for the most part, she just sounds like she's from, she's yeah. been living in the United States for I don't know how long. Um, but the company that we used to hire her is called Jobrack. And Job I got Rack. their name from Ashley Robinson, who was on an episode not too many um, weeks ago. And Ashley owns a marketing company that markets, does marketing for just law firms. You will huh. love this episode. When it, you haven't heard it yet, but when it, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful episode. But she, and we hired them, and y'all, her, and it was a great process. It cost. Yeah. It cost me like, Two grand. I think their prices went up okay. at the beginning of the year. But it was it's a wonderful process. Yeah. It was so good. So I'm sorry, but just yeah. you know, business thought of like yeah. all the paperwork and things like that. Yeah. That would be something good. All right, so as we transition into this, what will you let go of and what will you do more of as this transition goes? I think it'll just be more of do more of. Because mm -hmm. I don't think we're quite at the point of letting go of anything yet. Yeah, we're having a, a little bit of turnover right now, so trying to fill more inside CSR roles on the uniform side. CSR? Uh, customer service rep. Okay. Yeah, uh, inside sales support, that type of thing. So kind of right now trying to make sure that's good. My mm -hmm. customer service director has everything she needs, the people in place. Um, but just kind of continue doing what I'm doing. I brought down a guy from Birmingham. Uh, his wife's family was from uh, Orange Beach area. Her parents still live there. Um, met him, actually, the wife is good friends with Daryl Catherine's sister. Mm -hmm. um, met with him, brought him down, and he's now my sales manager on the Liberty Linen side and doing a phenomenal he's job. Michael. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's just what Charles has needed. Just, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah, he'll just pick up the ball and run without me asking. Mm. So, any, yeah. Does he have any equity? Will he have any equity? That's a great question. That's, yeah. that's something that we are talking about because they will be in Orange Beach forever. Yeah. yeah. And our plan has always been to replicate the Liberty Linen model at the next spot and go there. Yeah. We talked about Destin mm -hmm. at one point. I don't yeah. know if that's I think we're looking okay to talk about now. Destin. Yeah. 
Yeah, Maybe. well, Destin would still be nice. Um, but yeah, continuing more into Florida, just where vacation. Yeah. So when you you got, you got Destin and you transition into like Panama City and then yeah, I don't even and then there's a big nothing until yeah. you start until like you curve down to yeah. Tampa, Mexico. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah, I got you. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the equity because this is something that I deal with. Yeah. Um, with one of our businesses is, do you give equity or do you give profit share? Because equity, yeah, is you're kind of getting them and you're holding them into your company, yeah. but you're also giving up something. Profit share is really similar but at the back end of it you're not selling the thing yeah. see i like and and this is probably more from like a fear mindset but well both of our parents i mean 2008 was tough times i mean yeah. my dad mm. i mean we watched we were both in college we watched both of our parents go through like an extremely lean tighten everything down time it kind of makes me nervous that we could be it doesn't make me nervous to think that we could be going through that it makes me nervous to think that we could be bringing somebody else into that sure and you don't really know personalities until you kind of walk through the fire together you don't You're right um so i think profit share i'm comfortable with that i yeah, that's and we talked about that mm -hmm. a little bit and i think my initial is profit share, but I think as the years progress and our relationship progresses and I yeah. see him really do what I think he's going to do, you know, I, I would be open to it. But what is the hardest part about what you do? Your hardest job, part? the job part. I don't think there is a hard part about what I do. <laughs> How much do you work? You mean well, hours? Okay, hours. Well, I homeschool mm -hmm. and I paint. Mm -hmm. And so that takes up a pretty large amount of my time. The paperwork side doesn't take up that much of my time but the paperwork side is all very sensitive information so that would probably not be something i would ever pass yeah. off to anybody else i mean short of like a vial of blood a lot yeah. of the mm. tribal We're casinos talking, could i'm like collecting our, fingerprints parents, so. from his parents and banking information mm, and yeah. all kinds of sensitive <laughs> information um so that'll probably be something i always do and it really doesn't take very much time so how much do you work I don't know how to answer that. Like two hours a week or like 40 hours a week? Oh, no, not 40 hours a week. So. Give me a number, DK. <laughs> Give me a number. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, are we just talking on the at work side yeah. of things? Mm -hmm. Maybe like an hour, two hours a week? Oh, yeah. Crap. And it, it, it depends, you know. Yeah, I mean, because like, all of these things are due at a different time. Yeah, so if sure. all of a sudden I get a packet from Arizona that's got to be done or Louisiana, Louisiana has had such a bad history of fraud, fraud Gambling, and money laundering. laundering yeah. And so even if you are like, <laughs> listen, I have nothing to do with the gaming industry. I'm just supplying your uniforms. Don't they matter. have to go through every single thing to make sure that your business is legal. So those packets do take a long time. And then getting them there in a timely manner, because if our license expires and that casino wants to place an order with us, well, they can't if our license is expired. Um, yeah. So, okay. so it varies. It varies. What is the hardest part about your job? Would you say the HR part has become a hard part or is that? HR is very tricky, especially in the current climate current because climate. you can say. say or do something wrong and the employee can hold you over a barrel, you know, mm -hmm. or it just, it, the perception. Of and service. you didn't know you said something wrong. Yeah. yeah. So um, luckily, we found a lady. Give her a shout out, Gia Wiggins, with Moral uh, Morale Resources in Fairhope, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Awesome She's lady. Fabulous. Love her. She probably doesn't charge me enough. Mm -hmm. Edit that out. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she, she, I can call her or text her. Hey, this happened. What should I do? And she kind of gives you exactly so what. She's needs. a consultant. She is. Yeah. And she kind of helped rearrange. She's great. Did our employee handbook. Um, a lot of different employee files because there's a lot about the paperwork and pertinent information. So, so Rock and Brittany Sandretto own probably the best salon in Birmingham. Yeah. And they talk about how when they hired a, a consultant that had done it forever, and then Julie up in Tennessee owns a salon. And at them just using salons as an example, they hired a consultant, made all the difference in the world. Yeah. And you're saying that the money that the money that you're paying this human. Is worth it, is worth it because she just helps you deal with things that you don't know the answers to. No, because the common sense response of like, oh, well, they did this, so we're gonna do this. No, she's like, 
whatever you do, don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do what you think you want to do. She's had some of the funkiest stories that you're like, what? People do what? Yeah. Do what? From a family's perspective, what's the hardest part about what y'all do? Like job, family, what, what, Mm. what, where's the strain there? Time. Yeah. Time. Mine would be trying to cut off. And you said something really good the (laughs) other day, which I've taken to it and you'll notice i'm not wearing a watch right. so i'm not <laughs> distracted I hate, I hate an apple watch he got me one for christmas yeah. last year i resisted it for so long but i do like that it tracks the activity steps. stuff yeah. that is but a cop out well <laughs> who gives two flying craps well i'll tell you why in the mornings it is my only alone time during the day and i can look at it and if i haven't hit my two miles yet and the kids are like mom we want not yet i'm not done but when i hit two i'm done gotcha Here's why I hate an Apple uh-huh. Apple Watch. <laughs> it's because an Apple Watch is like a phone. Yes. So I heard Andy, Andy Stanley say this. When, you, when we're talking and the phone dings and you pick up your phone, mm. I'm telling you that the person that I don't know who that is yeah. is more important than you. Yeah. And people think that you're being slick these yeah. days because they look at their watch. Uh-huh. Now, I've looked at my watch three times since we've started, but y'all have really time. not noticed. But all I've done is just did like that. Uh-huh. I, but when, here's the, what happens these days is someone looks at their watch because it's a text message. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you the same thing. I know when you're looking at a text. Yeah. My favorite is when like, he yeah, does they this. Do it. I didn't do this number. <laughs> Is that hey, telling? There's a new uh, thing yeah. where you can tap your fingers or do oh, something. But so see, he sweet. loves the technology, the shortcuts. He loves learning all that. This I'm, is true. I'm the grandma in the relationship. So, so time is your biggest <laughs> thing, making yeah. sure you get everything done at work. There's just not enough of it. Yeah. But how can you? How can we? Okay, so let's go back. How can we streamline this? Like, how can we make? Because you're the streamline guy, the systems guy. Yeah. How do we? What? What do you offload? What do you increase? in order to do that because that's the goal of all of what we do yeah the yeah. goal is to not make truckloads of money in a way yeah i want to make truckloads of money but i want to make truckloads of money so that i can have the time to do whatever i want to yeah. do yeah like i work from home this morning it's a slower week at work work from home this morning i came in to do this for y'all i got meeting at two i'm done yeah, yeah. that's great yeah so what can you do mm-hmm. this, we can just make this the thing Clone session. Yourself. what can you do to, to figure this to offload these things you know, just continuing to, and I've been doing it for a while, slowly taking a task, again, making it as simple as possible, yeah. writing a little SOP, yep. as uh, Cody Sanchez says, mm-hmm. and then passing that off, making sure that person, you got it, do you need any help? Okay, you do that each week. And then just, you know, I've kind of got a huge list of the things that need to get done, yeah. or the ne- things that I need to do, and making sure who's my person to do this, what's a backup, because, mm-hmm. you know, Lord knows somebody, somebody will be off. Something will quit. happen. Yeah, or quit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just slowly, like Michael, there are several things. He's the sales manager. He's picking up for me and just taking and Perfect. doing. And it's like, so I'm bouncing a lot of ideas. Hey, what do you think about this? That? Okay, let's do this. Will you, you know, in Monday's meeting, tell everybody. He'll do that. So yeah. it's really well, nice. He, now I'm kind of, I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're good. Again, go to Sanchez. Mm-hmm. Be the archer, not the arrow. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to point everybody in this direction. All right, now y'all know what to do. I'm not going to nitpick and micromanage how to do it as long as you get it done and it's it's the end it's result. It's like we want it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you love, What the two of you, what do you love about what you do? Like, what do you, what do you enjoy about owning the business and running the business? Well, I guess from my side, one, we want to create a good company culture. Um, but why? That's a, that's a very like out of the box answer. I want to create a good culture. Why do well, you want to do that? It really, I guess when you've been around people, like some people, how long have some people worked at Liberty Linen? 20 years, 20 oh, plus uh, years. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see them and they're showing up day after day and you're thinking like when we first moved down to Orange Beach and I came to the office and I walked into the bathroom and the state of the bathrooms that these ladies are using every day, I was taken aback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we go and we get paint and we get new fixtures and we spent a whole weekend. Place toilets, lights, up switches. Yeah. So that when they came in on Monday, yeah. it was a new restroom. And one of the ladies, Charleston, <laughs> had like tears in her eyes about the restroom. And so they're spending 40 hours a week in this office and what can we do better can we do 
bonus is better? Can we be flexible with whether you're in the office or working from home? I don't know. And I think COVID made us really think about that. Like people's, Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're, they're people. They spend all day with Charles. We really want to take good care of the people who are spending their time with our business. Well, here's the other thing too. Those people, we want to create the culture because those people are incredibly, incredibly important to your family. Yeah. Without yeah. Susie and without Johnny yes. and without Mike and without, you know, yeah. Cindy, there yeah. would be no Liberty Living. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you go find somebody else, but you got people that have been there 20 years that know things yeah. inside and out. And they're, they're, yeah. they're the reason you can do the things that you do. But you've also given them a great job that they enjoy, apparently. Well, we hope so. But we yeah. want to, we want to Ten make it better. Now. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's always room for improvement i mean what time does jim get to the warehouse every single day he shuts the alarm off because it's on my phone yeah. at like 5 30. wow every, every day morning. like clockwork now well, he doesn't start till 6 6 30 whatever but he like he's we, seniority we've given him the grace to shift his schedule up a little bit so yeah. he leaves a little early but so tell me about what about you she so answered the, the culture question what, what do you love about what you do i love making things work mm-hmm. well um uh, you know, sadly, I went to Auburn for engineering, took all major classes, and then quit doing <laughs> that. Um, I kind of burned myself out. I mean, at a point, I think it was like my second or third year, you could calculate how far a block of wood would fall being hit by a bullet. You're kind of like, all right, you know, my brain hurts. Yeah. And it was only going to continue. Um, and then I think we were dating and <laughs> some other things influenced me. But... Um, I, I kind of got burnt out, and so I went into business management and then just immediately started working in the company just to have a job. Right. And kind of for a while, we actually had two retail stores that sold blue goods or police, fire, sheriff, security uniforms, all those types of things, one in Birmingham and one in Memphis. And it was like as I got in there, I was like, all right, this, this isn't functioning right. And I kind of just – took it upon myself like it was my own all right let me fix this okay this part's running good what what's going on back here let me fix this and then hey we're not good at retail this is terrible Let, let's shut this down then i go to we actually have an embroidery warehouse over in irondale which is just east of birmingham um, where we do a lot of embroidery heat seal alterations some inventory i kind of took over that and it was like this isn't working let's let's make this work better Mm. and then so i've kind of done that moving all through the company and i just really enjoy taking something broken and and fixing it and making it he's good at it so operator yeah so one of my next questions was this what are you really good at and so i think i know the answer for you you're a good operator you can go in find the problem Mm -hmm. and either fix the problem or find a solution to make the whole process better and that's a huge, huge skill set. What are you good at? What would you say that? I'm no, good at? no, I want, really? I want a, not, I want an I egotistical answer. An I'm really good at this. Egotistical answer. I don't know. I think that I've got some good leadership qualities. Mm-hmm. I think I'm good at identifying a problem, and I think we need to do this to fix sure. this problem. Mm-hmm. And Charles is then good at implementing that. That's great. That's Jeez. a good combination. Yeah. You know, yeah. throughout the years, she has just come up with business ideas and theologies with having never yeah. gone through business school. And it's like, I went to school to learn this. Why, why is it so natural for you? So, so she's just she like, my parents. why are you doing this? Do it yeah. this way. Yeah. You know, so. So let's go back to you in college. So uh-huh. let me get this story. So, <laughs> so where did you go to college? I started at Auburn. Started at Auburn. Yes. And was there a year. And so we got, we got into a conversation before we went on air about college. And there's so yep. many different opinions about college. So my opinion on college is I think college is a wonderful bridge from childhood to adulthood. Did you excel in college? Outside of the classroom? Yeah. Absolutely. How, how about in the classroom? I was a 3.0 kid. Okay. The only reason I was a 3.0 is because my mom paid my car insurance and I had to have a 3.0 because if yeah. I didn't, the rate went up. I, I do not love school. I love, I love school. learning. Okay. So school is the biggest waste of time for me. Like I like my kids will hear this and I here's what I want my kids to know. Yeah. I want my kids to be really really good readers. Yeah. That's number 1. Yeah. Number 2, I want them to be good at at math. Yeah. Like everyday yeah. math. I don't those care about Those are the big things. Those for are the us. big things. If yeah. you can read, you can learn. 
And if you can yeah. do math, and my biggest thing is like everyday money and also money math. Yeah. I want to know percentages. I want to know, you know, all the different, yeah. the way, and I also want them to be able to read business sheets, P and L's, pro formas, yeah. um, understand those things. Those are, yeah. those are critical things for me. Other than that, yeah, I really don't care, but I have a history degree. Okay. I have a master's in education administration and sports management. Okay. Okay. I don't use any of it. Yeah. Uh, I coached college football for 10 years. So I just don't, I didn't need any of it for so long. Yeah. From a bio, from a uh, physical aspect, <clears throat> we are not fully developed at 18. Yes. We're not fully developed at 22. Yeah. yeah. But we're a lot closer. Yeah. And so my time living on my own, paying my bills, balancing a checkbook that's a that's a really odd way to say it in 2024 yeah. <laughs> balancing a checkbook i was uh, ba- terrible at that yeah, balancing a budget things like that <laughs> yeah. um living with other humans that are yeah. not your family um those work type, schedule those work are schedules. all really good yeah. things. those are things that i learned yeah i don't know that i would have learned those living at home yeah okay yeah. i totally agree with that so for for, for me college mm-hmm. that is important mm-hmm. so the great example that i give as soon as i left college a guy named sam hunt Okay. Came to UAB. Oh, the yeah. singer? The singer. Okay. So one of my best friends, Sam Williamson. I've yeah. never told this story before. One of my <laughs> best friends, Sam Williamson. So most college football teams are 65, 75% African American. Yeah. And so in turn, that culture is going to dominate the locker room okay. in most places. So we had rap music on the whole time yeah. that I was there, my whole five years. Yeah. Okay. Sam said, he said, Thomas, when Sam, when Sam Hunt was there, he said, we would sit in our lockers and listen to Sam and his locker play the guitar. And they said, so interesting. for four or however long he was there, if Sam was not in class, if Sam was not playing ball, yeah. he was in a bar singing. You know who that is. True 10,000 right? hour rule guy. I think so. The guy who, he talks. Or, yeah. It's not really rap. Mm-mm. It's kind of In his across. songs. It's, yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Country singer, he's hugely successful. He is hugely But I, I tell the story of my, my, my daughter, my 15-year-old daughter. <laughs> and so she says, she says, I don't want to go to college. Well, I said, well, college is a guy. And I told her the same yeah. story. You learn and grow so much. Yeah. You I learn think you have a good people. perspective on it. My so. experience was different. I So I was really motivated in high school. I had, I mean, I was good at school. Yeah. Um, like really did really well on the ACT, like the trajectory of what my parents... What'd you make on the ACT? I want to know. Without a calculator, because I left it and my mom... I made a 33, 34. Okay. You ready for this? What? You made double what I made. <laughs> I made double what he made too. I just, I love. I don't school. remember what I made. <laughs> um, and I thought I was going to do so well at Auburn. And I went through Rush. I was in a sorority. I learned how to cross my legs properly mm. and not mm. chew gum and, and do all the things. And I kind of looked around and I was like, I don't fit. And this isn't, this isn't what I want to do. But I came home at Christmas and um, I have, I'm going to say, I have fabulous parents. Yeah. And I told my dad, because at Auburn, it was the old dorms when I was there. Oh, yeah. And so if you moved into a sorority dorm, the popular thing that they like to do because you had suite mates, so yeah. two dorms sharing one bathroom. They would like to put all four beds in one room and then use that second room as like a living room. <laughs> and they love that. A lot of people love that. <laughs> I lived in terror of that that was going to be my sophomore year. And I mm. came home and I told my dad, I can't, I remember being at the original Pancake House in Five Points yeah. and telling him, I can't do this. I, I can't go back and do this. And he was just like, well, well this is what you're going to do. He loved Auburn. Oh, yeah. They were so excited I was there. And um, I just kind of self-destructed after that. Um, and so anyway, I left Auburn. They, um, I went on a missions trip. I had seen this video, this documentary called Invisible Children. It totally flipped my world perspective upside down. I had done a missions trip with my soccer team to South America or to Brazil. Um, my summer going into my senior year we did we ran like soccer camps we took these kids from the slums the little shanty villages um took them to mcdonald's for the first time 
it was it was incredible so that had happened I see this documentary I called my parents and I told them I'm not supposed to be at Auburn I'm supposed to be in Africa and um, they were like well that's nice and maybe after you graduate from Auburn we can talk about we that can, we can work up a trip uh -huh. <laughs> so when I came home from Auburn um, I knew I wasn't going back after the first year after the first year my uncle at the time was the speed strength and conditioning coach at UCLA um, so that summer we took a trip to go look at UCLA and, and I was a fine arts major at Auburn they had a good art program at UCLA we were potentially going to transfer there huh. we toured the campus um, and then I don't know it, it felt kind of random I came home and my parents were like would you still like to go to Africa my dad had a guy that had worked with him at Hoare Construction when I was a baby he and his wife were digging water wells yeah. all throughout uh, Namibia and so they had set it up for me if I wanted to to come live with them and help them dig water wells and so that's what I did for three months and it was so when I think about like the college experience your parents put you on a plane with no cell phone and you're gonna travel sure. and be somewhere by yourself um, I feel like I got a lot out of that trip the Africa trip Yep. What did you do after Africa? Did you come back and finish? I came back. No, I started at Alabama. Mm -hmm. I did not finish at Alabama. I also got to visit a lot of community colleges in the state of Alabama. Perfect. Um, she gave a little money to all the colleges yeah, in Alabama. Yeah, or my parents did. Yeah. Um, Alabama was wonderful. Um, I really liked their campus. I, I really liked being there, but I still couldn't quite focus on what it was I wanted to yeah. do. Um, Charles and I were still dating. He was at Auburn. We were doing a lot of back and forth. And so I ended up back at Auburn. Yeah. So yep. you guys met there. How, how quickly after that? What was the story oh, there? We met in high school uh, on 280. Okay. So you met in high school. You dated through college. When was, what was the transition like to marriage? During that college time, I guess you were in your senior year, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, you were going into your senior year here at UAB. Yeah. And um, we went and had dinner at a friend's house. They were a little bit older. They had gotten married, and it was just so nice. I mean, they are making dinner, and I was looking around. I was like, I want this, mm. and I want this now, um, or yeah. else we're going to turn into now. brother and sister. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, you're trying to yeah. do things the right way. And um, so we slipped a note to my mom that was like, because she was on the phone with something. She kept telling me, I can't talk right now. And I just slipped her a note that was like, I want to get married in two months. And so we, that's what we did. We fast-tracked everything. And we had a beautiful wedding, but it was just family at Aldridge Gardens. Mm -hmm. And um, I took my international business uh -huh. exam yeah. an hour before that. And then, uh -huh. really, and then we got married. Good for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was time. And So tell me about the family. Tell me about kids, and I mean, you guys have moved around a little bit. You're down at Orange Beach now. Tell me about the kids. We have awesome kids. Mm -hmm. um, Charlie, our oldest, is 12. Okay. He, um, he's definitely a first child. He definitely is first child. He's wonderful. Um, he was born early, and he was in the NICU for the first three months of his life. Oh. Yeah. Wow. The process of having our first child was the most humbling and truly made me dependent on god yeah that's incredible three yeah. months yep he um he coded two or three times and every time that we would have like a successful thing happen with him people would say and we would say god is so good god is so good mm -hmm. and one day i was sitting there and i was holding him and i was just saying how good god is and this little voice said but what if he had died would I still be good? Wow. And I, having Charlie completely changed me. I feel like I was a really proud person mm. before. And um, I think it softened my sharp edges and humbled me incredibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you go through having a sick child, I, I, I hear that for some marriages it maybe breaks it apart. But yeah. for us, it really brought us closer together. Yeah. Um, and we've, after that, he just kept yeah. having somebody, he'd catch a cold from school or whatever, and he had a lot of respiratory issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
bronchial issues, and so it'd be in the ER every month almost. Yeah. And so wow. we hospitalized just a few times. Healthy now. Healthy now, but it's been a long journey to get to that point. Is he a big kid, a small kid? Because he was born he's, so early. He's big a, kid. About to be taller than she is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We're That's about great. looking eye to eye. What about sports? Does he play sports? Um, we have tried sports. I think one of our friends said we're encouraging our son to play country club sports, and I was like, you know. Charlie does like golf and he does like tennis and maybe that's just the direction we'll go. We he, he enjoyed the dugout more than he, he enjoyed loved actually dugout life. Having so, yeah. the ball thrown so get the sunflower seeds out, exactly. get the gum. Yeah. 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 Cheer. So there's a, the family up the street, the Williams, and they're precious people. They've got three boys and their kids don't play sports. The one of them is a mountain biker, and I said I said something about does they did what, they play f- football, basketball, yeah. baseball? Yeah. She goes, No, we're readers. Oh. We're readers. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. That's great. Well, I, am, I am too. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it feels weird, and I guess some of that is just stereotypical. You expect your boy to excel mm-hmm. at sports because my family culture was you better do good at school and you better do good at sports. Well, you went up to another country and did soccer. It was a big part of that's a, Travel soccer was well, a huge part of sports life. Sports are a gigantic part of Jackie yes. and Ash's life, both for yeah. playing ball in college. It's a huge part. So, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. There's, it's there. So, tell me, hey, tell me about your other, your other kids. Marigold or middle, she is now she's doing travel soccer, and okay. so soccer has once again become a big part of life, and it's a lot of fun. And she's how old? She's eight. Okay. She's very uh, creative and funny. <laughs> Loud and wild as yep. well. Yep. Yep. And then Finley, our youngest, is six, and she's into tumbling and whatever. Do we really know what they're into at six and seven? Because like I, my sick, my I have one that turned eight two days ago, and I really don't know what she's into. She spends almost all of her time doing handstands right now. Okay. So I feel Perfect. like I can safely say uh-huh. she is That's into it. That's what she it. wants to do. But they're just they're good kids, and we homeschool. And um, I feel like I, well, I feel like I know them. I spend what is mm-hmm. it when you spend X amount of hours doing something, 10, you become hours. a expert on it. Mm-hmm. It's like but by the time your kids turn five, you spent that amount of time with them, and now we're together every day so from a family family work perspective okay what are you guys working on right now like what is important that you're that it, what is important to Ooh. you guys that you're having multiple conversations with us? so the question is this what are you yeah. working on right now i would say our kids faith their relationship with jesus becoming their own mm-hmm. not not very, that it's something good. that we're pushing on Absolutely. them yep. yeah. um because that kind of terrifies me that like we put so much emphasis of You've got to give your heart to Jesus. You've got to give, and then they do it because mom and dad are telling sure. them this is what you've got to do. And they go to college, and they're like, "Well, I only really did any of that because mom and dad mm-hmm. told me I had to." So I'd say a lot of our conversations when we have time. I, my favorite thing to do with Charles is to walk and talk. And so when we have time to do that, I think where our kids' hearts are at is kind of mainly what we talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And just kind of leading them in that relationship seeking God just mm-hmm. by the way we act, the way we talk, um, the conversations we have, the examples we give. Well, and that our life won't look like the world's life, and yeah. we don't want it to. Which is funny having conversations like about Halloween. We're kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah we're kind of thing. punting we're, that one. We don't do it at you know, all. We're just we, very yeah. upfront okay, about okay, it. Okay, okay, we yeah. don't either. And it's, we don't dress up. We just yeah. say, hey, guys, this is this well, devil's holiday. <laughs> we love Jesus. This is Satan's holiday. You know how we love Christmas and we yeah. celebrate Christmas yeah. and our whole house is Christmas? That's Satan's holiday. So, so we just, and there are people out there that are going to rip me yep, for saying that. Yep. But, like, I really don't care. If you oh, go back and spend 15 minutes on yep. the Google researching it. Yep. It's really it will funny. Terrify you. So when yeah. we were in Birmingham and we'd we'd go on this like one little street in Homewood and it was sweet and everybody mm-hmm. was a football player and a yeah. princess. And then we moved to Orange Beach and it's October and houses around us look like saw and yeah. just like these horrible, horrible things. Horror movies. And you can't protect Mm-mm. your children from it anymore because you're taking them to these houses. And I think the first year we were in Orange Beach, we were like. Yeah. And the second year, and I don't think we talked about it. And the second yeah. year, we both felt uncomfortable again. And we finally, I was like, I'm uncomfortable. And he said, I'm uncomfortable too. Wow. And that was, that was it. So that's a great segue. What do you guys struggle the most? Like be transparent. What are you struggling with with, with parenting? With parenting? What are you not very good at right now? He would be <laughs> patience and not treating my kids or expecting them to be slaves more or less like my mom not slaves adults 
Yeah, okay. He will do the thing with the girls like... Big difference. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like he expects them to have adult reactions mm. and adult feelings. I'm like, they're six, they're eight. Or remember things better than, sadly, I remember Holding things. them to a you. higher standard That's than great. we yeah. hold I struggle with that a little bit. each other to. Yeah. I do. Me and my so. wife talk about that a lot. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's what a hard you? thing. What about you? All, it's all his problems. What are your problems? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I think I have high standards. And, but more so with Charlie because he's 12 mm-hmm. and we have a lot of conversations about like I can't treat you like a baby Yeah, you've got to start stepping into manhood and I don't I mean I'm I'm a woman I'm not a man sure. but I'm with him all day Yep. and so not pushing him too hard but also being too soft on him I think I I think every day I kind of struggle with that push and pull of how much to push forward and how much to pull back. Mm-hmm. So, Charlie's 12. There's a book called The Man Maker Project by Chris Bruno. Oh, you need to read it. Okay. Okay. I've read it once. Tegan's 12. He's in the fifth grade. Charlie in the sixth grade or fifth? Fifth. Uh, six. Okay. So, you need to read it. Okay. So, we're the only culture in on the planet yeah. that doesn't have a rite of passage for yeah. our humans. Yep. Okay. Mainly because we're very, very new. People don't yeah. understand this, that America is in a very, very new country. Yeah. And Hispanic and African and, you know, South American. and yeah. They're so old. Yeah. Meaning they have these things that they do yeah. that are a quote right of passages. Like, for example, the guy that delivered all three of my kids is Filipino. They had the Philippines is an old country. They've been there forever. Yeah. Well, they've got these right of passages that they do. This book talks about creating a rite of passage for your human and mainly your your son there's a book called a voice becoming you're not ready to read it yet but it's by his wife okay okay and it's the same thing it's called a voice becoming yeah. and it is the same thing it's a the american rite of passage for uh girls yeah we're in that stage yeah. and so this probably would be something for us good to do not necessarily together but like maybe like bouncing ideas and thoughts yeah. off each other of yeah. like because it's a year-long process yeah and you want to – Mark Batterson, who I think is one of the best authors out there, wrote a book called um, – man, it's called – gosh. <laughs> As I've been six or eight Hold years on. since I What's read it. What's the name? Uh, Mark Batterson? Batterson. Mark Batterson. Batterson. He's a, a phenomenal Christian author, but he just he's a great writer. I, he's wonderful. It's not called Man Up. It's called Something with a Man. About, and it's the same yeah. premise as a Man Maker Project. But Chris goes through a little bit more detail with it. And I know Chris. I met Chris in Colorado. He's wonderful. But this is very, very good for what we're yeah. fixing to embark upon. So um, I don't know why I went down that rabbit, rabbit trail, but that's well, uh, it was Charlie. there. So let's talk about business, okay? Let's transition back to business. What, yeah. what would y'all tell a, a young business owner? Ooh, I was going to ask you that. What would you tell a young business owner? Um, I guess for me. Like you're 35 and you're just starting your business. What okay. are the things I'm, like... I'm, like, I'm, I'm 43. Yeah. yeah, no, you're... Because I'm 35. Yeah. So, and we're starting this in 2024. What I mean, what are the things that are like your top of priority list? Number one would be be in great shape. Huh? Be in great Physic- shape. Like physically, physically great shape. Okay. be in great shape. Um, when you walk into a room and you're in great shape, whether you're male or female, people notice. And when, Do you feel like it commands respect? I think it commands respect, but I also think the, the respect it commands is that person has a delayed gratification. That okay. person has great habits. That person okay. has, has more to them than, the, than just a normal looking human. Okay. And that sounds, yeah. you know, I don't know if it sounds bad or not. <laughs> Andy Elliott, who's a very, very is. ostentatious, loud, boisterous sales guy. And he talks about when you shake, and this is really man- manly. Yeah. He says, when you shake somebody's hand, and you see the, the vein in your <laughs> bicep. He says that tells that tells somebody that you've worked hard. Yeah. And hard work is a is a trait habit. Yeah. That I would that I, it commands so much respect, and I would say hey, yeah. this is a trait that you need. Um, the second thing I would tell a uh, business owner would be to start investing as early as you possibly can. And I mean 25 bucks a month. I mean. And investing it into what? I don't really care. The easy answer is this. The easy answer is dollar cost averaging. The market is is extremely consistent. It's extremely boring. 
but I would rather get rich being get rich bored than not get rich at all. And okay. so me dollar cost averaging from 18 to 32, 18 to 35, 37 helped me buy my first apartment complex. That's awesome. So like I just was boring. I shut my eyes and I just automatically transferred but, money out every month. But how do you make, and this is something I struggle with, because, well, maybe not struggle, but I hear people give that advice and they're talking to that 20 year old who's starting and it makes the 35 year old feel like, or it makes me feel like, well, gosh, I haven't been doing that the last yeah. decade of my life. So sure. what do I, what do I do to feel like I can catch up? Well, at 18, I didn't have near the, the purchase power that you yeah. did. So at 18, I t I've told this story before. When I was 18 year old, I got $2,000 for graduate from high school. You send yeah. out invitations, people send yeah. you money. I took $1,000 and blew it. I took $1,000 and gave it to a guy in the church. Don't even remember the guy's name. And he invested into mutual funds. And he said, send me money every month. Okay. I said, okay. So in college at 18 years old, I sent this guy 25 bucks a month. I started parking cars and started making money. Made a lot of money in college. Okay. I started sending 50, started sending 100, started hitting 200 bucks a month. And I just did that. Was he sending you like reports and letting you know how your money was yeah, growing? Yeah, I'd get okay. something every month. Okay. I'd get something in the mail every month. Was that yeah. exciting? Eh, it's fine. <laughs> I just knew that it was just not my money. Okay. I knew it was my money, but I knew okay. it wasn't my money. And so I just did that. But I could do it 20, I, I remember the, the, the range I used was 25 to 400 bucks a month. $400 okay. is when I made a killing. Okay. Yeah. You at 35 have more buying power than that than I do. So yeah. you can fast track. Now here's the thing that the advantage that I have at 18 yeah. is time. Yeah. Time is the is the neutralizer and the, the, the unfair advantage that you have. Yeah. So as opposed to me giving twenty five to four hundred bucks a month, you could do two thousand, yeah. fifteen hundred, whatever, and it would fast track that. So thirty five okay. you could do that and just shut your eyes and put that away. Yeah. And at fifty five, what would it be? At forty five, what would it be? That's not yeah. forty five is not far. Yeah. Okay. So the whole getting good shape and the investing, those are the things that I Those would are tell both really owner. good things. Did, did you say you had a third thing? No, two is all I got. Just two. I mean, if you give, too many, if you give people too many things, they forget all of them. Yeah. So the, the, the exercise and habit thing, too, is something that it's not only just to command the presence and to show someone that you've worked hard, but when you are in great shape, you have more energy. Okay. Yeah. And if I've got more energy, I can do the thing. Like, for example, yesterday normal morning routine i got up when i got up i was coaching basketball at 9 25 last night so from four o'clock yesterday morning to 9 25 now i can't do that every day yeah but the reason i can do that is because i got good energy yeah. because i'm in relatively good shape so i think that's critical yeah i think that's critical for business owners because like you said you wear so many hats mm -hmm. you for example you wear a ton of hats you have to go from teaching homeschool mm -hmm to you know painting mm -hmm. to making sure that the state of louisiana has all their paperwork yep and i think if you don't have good clarity in your mind it's hard to transition yeah from one thing to another yes because that's what you have to do you got to go from sales to hr to logistics to oh my gosh i gotta pay this bill yeah in an hour i gotta put out a fire exactly yeah so those are those are pretty critical things for for me yeah. so that's good. Um, okay, so we've talked about this before. Outside of business and investing, where do you guys invest your money? You smiled. What are you about he to is say? Smiling. Oh, she has no idea. Nothing. I love this. <laughs> well, but you've had such a well, like, like smile about you. Because I, I wish we could. We've talked about doing different things, but right now, nothing. I've. Well, we put in a poll. Our money. You actually had an episode where you had somebody on, mm. and y'all talked about pools and how. Forget what he did. I don't remember what he did. I feel like it was an early episode, mm -hmm. and he said that having a pool makes you like a central home. Oh, yeah. The kids will flock to your house, and um, we put one in this summer. I feel like that was a great thing we did. Mm -hmm. From an just activity standpoint and friends coming over. We love a pool. I would yeah. have never gotten a pool. We bought a house with a pool. We moved yeah. back to Birmingham. I, n I would have never built a pool, knowing that now, now that we have one. Yeah. I think a pool is critical if you've got kids. Yeah. Because it makes your house the place that people want to come. Having yes. parties. I mean, you can swim eight months a year here. Yeah. So yeah. it's a critical part. Yeah. I'm talking, when I say investing. Oh, yeah. oh you said investing. I missed that When part. I say investing, what financially do you invest in outside mm -hmm. of your business? Nothing, Nothing right now. Okay. But yeah. I've been 
focused Charles on Charles has a learning, fire in his yeah, belly to on real begin. estate. Okay. And so, are yeah. you are you extinguishing that fire? Oh, that's a great question. Mm. Um, extinguishing, I feel like, is a harsh word. Okay. Um, I Charles's parents are more adventurous than my parents. Okay. Um, I'm setting you up. I, no, you are setting me up. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like I come at things a little bit differently than Charles does. He's he's more of a like, let's do it, and yeah. I'm like, let's ask some questions first. Sure. Let's see which way the wind is blowing. Yeah. And um. And then wait till it blows the other. Are way. you a natural <laughs> procrastinator? That's a great question too. Probably. I think it depends on what we're talking about. Would you describe yeah. yourself as a perfectionist? Yes. Okay. Here's my theory on this. Okay. Ooh. Perfectionism and people that call themselves perfectionists mm -hmm. are more procrastinators than anything because you want things to be perfect yeah. before you execute. When in reality, you need to execute and then fix. Well, see, you know? from a painting standpoint, it's not before I execute, it's before I can be finished. It's I will sit, I want to live with it for so long mm -hmm. um, because I don't feel like it's good enough un until I feel like it's good enough. But I don't really ever, sometimes Charles just has to say, you're done. It's finished, it looks it's good, yeah. wrap it up, ship it. Um, Think about this though. Think about if everything had to be perfect, nothing would be, nothing would progress. And see, is it, I think I heard Jenna Kutcher talk about that, that if you're waiting for it to be perfect, you're never gonna do it. You're never gonna do it. And I know that that's a problem I have, but some of it is not from a procrastination. Some of it is, I feel like, and I don't know who I think has these expectations on me. Maybe I do want things to be perfect because yeah. I want to please people. Sure. I don't want someone to get something from me and be like, well, this should have been different or she could have done better on this. If she had just put more time into I, it. I don't want to be perfect. I want to be great. Yeah. The iPhone is a great example. Yeah. There's, I'm on, we're on iPhone 15. Oh, well, I don't even know. So, he created the iPhone. Jobs yeah. created the iPhone. Mm -hmm. but, but think about this. If he would have waited for it to be perfect, mm -hmm. it would have never been created. So he created the iPhone, and he got it out there. He's got a new version. Now, obviously, we yeah. know why he has new versions, because he makes more money. Yeah. But understand this. You get an iPhone, and then every three months, two months, four months, it's got a what? It's got an update. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's what we're doing. If we just wait for things to be perfect, if we procrastinate because we want it to be perfect, this girl used to work for me. Yeah. She, all her pencils had to be sharpened, and her computer had to be fully powered up, and her notebook had to have a clean sheet of paper, and all these things had to be ready before she could start things. And I'm uh, like, okay. just freaking start. Just go, and then we'll fix it on the yeah. back end. So I'm not, I'm like, let's go, just do it. Yeah. Let's do it, and then fix it. That's, I feel like instead of trying to be perfect, we just need to try to be great. Because yeah. there's always a next level to great, as opposed to this never going to be perfect. And we yeah. can try for that. We're going to be we're going to be disappointed in ourselves. Yeah. But we're also going to be disappointed in others. Yeah. And that's the one thing we don't want to do. It's not like expectations with our kids. We've all I deal with it bad. Yeah. Y'all said y'all dealt with it. Wanting them to be great is a difference than wanting them to be perfect. Because great is one step one step above what they were the day before. Yeah. And for us too. And so that's the, my like perfectionism. Theory. The real estate thing kind of scares me. I mean, I, I saw, I saw <laughs> a meme the other day of somebody like being pushed off of a, like a rocky gorge and it says real estate for beginners. That's you know? right. That is exactly were you, how I feel. Were you raised, raised in the Dave Ramsey world of thought? Probably quasi. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I mean, well, my mom can be very Dave Ramsey, but she can also be very, we can't take it with us. Mm. So let's go on the vacation or let's buy the fabulous dress or. She's Dave um, Ramsey when it's something she doesn't have to have, but when it's something she absolutely wants, she's yes. like, yo, yeah. I got you. But I mean, but also that's just, my parents both they had the their traditional. Companies. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Very traditional. That's gotcha. a, in all areas of life. Okay, quick questions at the end. Go to activity with your kids. Go. What is it? Are you answering this? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Playing. Yeah, playing. Charles is wrestling. Great at, yes. Is he trampoline? Jumping on the trampoline, chasing rolling around, them, throwing right. the kids, making them laugh till they can't uh -huh. breathe, attacking them. Yeah. More or less. Perfect. So just fun, yeah. loving, rough play. Yeah. What's your favorite follow on social media? Ooh. 
I love home decor accounts, okay. um, but House and Habit is probably the one I seek out and really? look at her stories. She's fascinating. Perfect. What about yeah. you? Babylon B. What is that? <laughs> oh, you found it? <laughs> yes. It's a Christian-based political satire, but they poke fun at both sides I all love the time. He it, loves it. I mean, really? it owns me all the time. Really? So I love that. Yeah. That's good. Favorite vacation that y'all have taken? Just to you, just the two of you. Asheville was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was work slash personal. Um, just a little organizational trade show up there, and we mm-hmm. went and but took her and we stayed at one of the Omni hotels in Asheville, which is like in a rock mountain. Really. Huh. We're unique. also Disney people. We love a good. You're clearly not, but we love a good Disney trip. For the. Family fun, kids, yeah. magical, but not even for what gone, they've decided to do recently. We've gone just the two of us several times. As adults. As adults. Wow. Yeah. Rope drop. We do the whole thing. We just we'll dropped talk, in his book. <laughs> we'll talk about <laughs> Disney when we get off the air. What's your favorite vacation that you've never taken? Europe. Yeah. Okay. My brother I, is in Germany right now. Okay. He, by the time, well, he should be engaged in the next week. Um, he wants to get married in Greece, and so that will probably be a trip we take this year with the kids. Mm-hmm. With the kids, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, both answers. I want two different answers. Mm-hmm. Can't say the Bible. What's the best book you've ever read? You go ahead. Well, the first answer could be the same, and it's not the Bible. We we have both read. You're reading it right now. We have both read a life changing book this last year, The Awe of God by John Bevere. I it's feel good. like this book chased me down. Mm-hmm. I, a friend sent the podcast with him. Amazing. And then he was on a Grow Leader podcast yeah. with uh, Pastor Chris. Spoke to the college, yep. which we're at Highlands College. Yep. Um, and then I was asked to join a Bible study, and that is the book they were doing. And it it is incredible. I would encourage anybody to read it. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Well, I was going to say that because uh-huh. I'm Cause currently doing it, doing it okay. now with a, a best friend here in yeah. Birmingham. Other than that, the, the next book, and I actually did in a little Bible study I'm in down there, uh, we did a book swap and I brought it, but The Holy Spirit by John Bevere. Y'all Kinda like John just, Bevere. He's good. I've read three or four yeah. of his things. Yeah. I just, think I've read that book. I yeah. can't remember. It's really, I yeah. mean, yeah. when it's you get the fear. opening yeah. thought turning, you know, it's just, so that was a very... Because, I mean, the Holy Spirit is who Jesus sent to be here. It is the action of God who separated the waters still here mm-hmm. with us. And it's, I, when I started reading it, I was like, why are we not talking why about the Holy Spirit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally so. get it. Parenting book, though, Habits of the Household. Very good. Oh, you've read it? I have read it. I love that book. Ruthless Elimination of Hurry Yeah, is very good. It's yeah. along the same lines as that. Um, I'm going to go back and reread a bunch of stuff. So I did that this morning. <clears throat> I took yeah. probably six or eight books that I've read that are really, really good. Because there's a lot of theories out there. Um, Alex Hormozzi talks about this. Of Why would you want to read just a bunch of different books? Instead, go back and find the ones that are great and reread them and yeah. know them better. So yeah. I've got probably That's 10 awesome. or 12 books. Ah, maybe not even that. Six or eight books. Now, I will still read new stuff. I've got new stuff on my yeah. desk now, but I went. Do you read pulled. or do you listen? I read. Okay. See, I can't. He likes to listen. I like to read. Well, I want to underline and write notes, though. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I've got like a 30-minute drive to work, 30-minute drive home. Yeah. So that's kind of when I get sure. in there. So I sit in the sauna every morning, so I, dre- I read there, and that's like 20 minutes. And then I read before I go to the gym in the morning. I read a little bit at night, yeah. but it ain't much. Yeah. I'm like, I go to sleep pretty yeah. good. So, tell us about what you're doing right now. Yeah, the reason I reached out to you about yeah, because like the, there was the one episode business. you talked about businesses, businesses you were mm. looking at. So, what's happening with that? I'm working on right now, which is kind of really part of what I'm doing. Is I'm really spending a lot of time learning Facebook ads. Really? Okay. So, a guy that w- I hired a guy to teach me and somebody on my team. Facebook how to ads. run and learn Facebook ads. Okay. The reason I am is because I've had such a horrible time yeah. finding companies to run them and then being anywhere close to knowledgeable at all. So hmm. you feel like your customer is on Facebook? Uh, I feel like my customer for Weddings Costa Rica yeah. is on 
Facebook, Instagram. Facebook ads is not just it's Facebook, okay. Instagram. Okay, yeah. So See, it's both. I love Instagram. I feel like I use it as a search engine now. If I Instagram? W- yes. If I go to a new city and we want to go to a new restaurant or find, I look on Instagram. Fa- let me tell you about Facebook. Facebook has helped me out twice this week, yeah. finding three times this week, finding stuff that I needed. I will go on Facebook and I said, best place to get my eight-year-old daughter's ears pierced. Where were I? Where was I going to go? I was going to yeah. go to Claire's. Yes. Where'd you okay. go? You Swaddle? ready? A tattoo parlor. <gasps> tattoo parlor. Well, it's very clean. Every f- yeah. It was 51 yeah. comments in less yeah. than an hour. I bet. And 48 of them were this tattoo parlor. And the yeah. other three were don't go to Claire's. <laughs> don't go to Claire's. That was it. Yeah. So like, yeah. that's helped. And then I'm build, building a dock at the lake. I found some more yep. there. And it... It, it helps me. Yes. So I'm learning Facebook ads right now. I'm doing a lot of private money lending with okay. real estate. It is the best thing for an entry, entry point for anybody doing real estate. Okay. It is give somebody money, charge an interest rate, put a timeline on it, charge simple interest, and just wire money and make yeah. money. So I'm doing that a lot. And then I really have something in my soul to start a fund. I get so many people that ask, hey, I got a lot of extra money got forty thousand dollars got eighty thousand dollars that i need to invest what do i do and i enjoy it like a real estate syndicate? i don't know i don't know if it's real estate i don't know if it's other businesses i don't know if it's private money lending i don't know what it is but i think that that's probably something i will do in the next 12 to 18 months is that like just a thought that comes to you or is it a dr- we were talking about dreams that, like how does that so if more than if one person asks you a question because yeah. they think you know something about that, yeah. it's a thought. Uh-huh. If more than one person asks you about it, it may be something that you need to look into. I've had five or six people message call me okay. and say, hey, I've got this much money. I've got this much money. What should I do? And I just, as I've gone through the different avenues that we invest, it's just it seems like I don't know anything about it, though. And I got to find somebody that does it, knows it, and help them, and then learn and go do one on my own. Because That's there's awesome. too many people out there that, that like for y'all, for example, if you were to, over the next two years, create some income, and you're sitting yeah. on $150,000, you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, let me help you do that. Yeah. And so that's something that I really, really want to do. Well, that's, we were talking about this yesterday. You had... You had talked about the different, not buckets, but percentages. And oh, when yeah. it gets this, put it here. So that is something we want to start mm-hmm. doing. The um, profit first? Yeah. yeah. When we get Come off January. air, let's go through that. Yeah. I will go through the exact process yeah. of what we do. Because it Sifid. sounds like that's probably the most, like yeah. the easiest way it's, to just start. It's like you're sending that 20, 25 bucks to that guy. It's just, let me go ahead and slide it over here because that's it's, what it's going to go for. Yeah. It's, it's a game changer. It's, yeah. If you're disciplined now. Yeah. If yeah. you're disciplined, it's a game changer. Once that, Charles yeah. gets the structure in place, he's super disciplined. So, yeah, those are the things I'm working on right there. But what about weddings? <clears throat> weddings Costa Rica has been a challenge. Okay. Um, we've made money in everything that we've done pretty quickly. Okay. Real estate, table and time, meal fit. Yeah. This is a business that is not like just make the money. Mm. Okay. Uh, and so... I've had to, I've talked to other owners about their businesses and things like that. And so, um, we're making money. We're just not extremely profitable. Yeah. And I am used to starting a business, never having debt and growing it. I've invested money in it and I've not made back what I've invested in it yet. Okay. That's hard for me. <laughs> and just, it just yeah. is. Hmm. And so, but I really think that weddings Costa Rica has the mo as much upside as anything that we do. Do you feel like you could have weddings at the lake? I do. Yeah. I think we'll probably be down the road in the, another year or two. Yeah. Um, we have a beautiful spot at Walcox Point. Yeah. It's well, great. it's like you could offer like a package. We I could. can do your catering. Food, I can do, I mean, all, all of it. I would probably, here's what I would probably do. I'd probably have f- five a year. Yeah. Awesome. Pick five dates yeah. and say, hey, this is what we're doing. These yeah. are the dates we're doing it. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be really, really specific and really, mm-hmm. really... Um, I don't want to say high end, but just this is what we got. Yeah. If you want this date, great. Come. Yeah. And I would pick good dates. Yeah. So things like that. That's pretty cool. Yep. Well, tell us about your experience with 
Highlands College. So mm -hmm. we're yeah. we've been talking about it. Um, we're in it. Yeah. This facility we're in is it. awesome. We've, we've walked through the halls. My son got to walk through it. Yeah. Her, her father, you know, built it. Just but. I think that I get asked a question all the time about it. I think it's a. It is not a college if you're like quote not sure what you want to do. Okay. It's not that. Like this is not Auburn. This is not Alabama. It's not UAB. It's not yeah. that. It's not Sanford. It's not like, and that people relate it to Sanford because it's a Christian school. Yes. It is a ministry school. But let me say this. If you could replicate the model mm -hmm. at other places for business, for teachers, for other professions, okay. it's wonderful. Yeah. It is the best model I've ever seen. So yeah. let me give you an example. They go to school in the morning. They sit in class. They talk about communication. They talk about the Bible. They talk about all those things. Then they go in the afternoon. They do what they call practicum. And so they're sitting with, look, if it's worship, they're sitting with C.J. Blunt, who leads the worship team at the yeah. church. He's helping teach class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's creative, it's Kellen, and he's t helping them learn those things. And then what they do is they go on the weekend, and they do that thing. That's awesome. And they do this for two or four yeah. years. They're not waiting four years no. to put their toes in. The yeah. That's, Think about this. That's awesome. Think about a teacher. A teacher goes through four years of school, yep. sits in a classroom, and then they go for one semester yep. and student teach. Yep. And that's who's educating our kids. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Not our kids. Somebody else's kids because we homeschool. <laughs> so, but with Highlands College in the ministry portion, they go and they are in that for four years. Yeah. Leading worship. Yeah. They're communicating. They're working with students. They're doing hospitality. They're doing events. It's incredible. So if you could replicate that for business, for teachers, yeah. for law, what it would do, it would weed people out. Yeah. And there are some kids that yeah. come here that realize this is not what they want to do. Yeah. Because ministry is not easy. Yeah. You have to be called to it. It's not a thing that you just yes. go do. But this place does as good a job at any higher institution that I've ever seen of preparing kids to go teach the message of Jesus in all the different ways. Yeah. It's not just somebody speaking on stage. It's worship. It's hospitality. It's creative. It's the yeah. guy behind the freaking camera. Yeah. That guy's important, yeah. especially this day and age. Yes. So I love being here. I love, we provide the food for all of them. I love being here. I love being with the kids and, and cutting up with them. I can't get to know all of them, but I get to know a lot of them. Yeah. So it's a great place. I really love it. That's awesome. So yeah. All right. What else? Anything else? But this is going to be dead for a second. If we were to hit play on your phone or <laughs> music, CD, whatever, if people still use CD, CDs, yeah. what would it be? Um, I don't have any social media right now. Okay. Well, then who runs your... I've got a whole team that does it. Okay. So, yep. I'll, we can talk about that later. So, uh, I'm off all social media right now. I, YouTube. I'm not a music guy. I'm not a music yeah. guy. <clears throat> I don't love music. I like music, but I don't just like listen to music. I go to the yeah. gym. I listen to, um, I'm a huge My First Million fan. Okay. Sam Parr, Sean, up. they're great. Yeah. They're wonderful. Uh, obviously, we talk about Cody Sanchez a lot. I listen to everything she does. Do you listen to Business Made Simple? No. Who is that? Donald? Man, he's, I like him. I don't love him. Yeah. yeah. I he like has, him. He has taught us some things about streamlining and messaging yeah. and branding and just I want to hear stories y'all yeah I want to hear what you know Naval did or I want to hear what you yeah. know, Sam did or, or yeah Jesse I want to hear what Jess I want to hear the stories this yeah. is what I did this is how I did it and this is the method I did it in. okay as opposed to theory I mean, okay and I don't know Donald Miller yeah but, but that what, is a big difference but what yeah. business is Donald Miller run I don't know he may yeah. run a, yeah. I mean obviously he runs a business now because his books and but he's yeah. more famous than he is anything yeah so I want to know I want to hear stories. So like that's that. kind of, that's really my thing. Yeah. So I'm not a mean music guy. <laughs> okay. Hey, thank you guys so much. This was great. <laughs> um, the stories of how y'all came together and what you're doing now and the homeschooling and the painting and the, all the different things. It's been really great. So where can someone find y'all if they wanted to reach out and have a question or if they wanted to do business with you or anything like that? So where, where can somebody find you? With the companies, you go to atworkuniforms.com or libertylinen.com, mm -hmm. and all that communication comes to me. I'm not really on Facebook. I have an Instagram, but yeah. it's for funny dad stuff. And um, communicate with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, the website's probably the quickest way to get to me. Great. Perfect. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining. This is great. Thank you. Thank you.